In this video, we're going to look at an example of using proportions to find a missing length in similar triangles. So we have this diagram, and we have two triangles, and we know that they are similar. These triangles are similar. Find the missing length. Okay, so here's our missing length right here. Now, one thing that the problem um, tells us is how these triangles relate to each other just through the pictures. So when you think of similar triangles, think of something being enlarged or something being shrunk. Like if you took uh, triangle PRQ and stuck it on a copy machine and hit enlarge, you could get triangle XYZ. So the side that was 24, let's use some colors here, the side that was 24 has now expanded to this size that's 36. The size that was 34, the side, I should say, excuse me, has now expanded to the side that's now 51. And the side that was 50 has now expanded to some side H, and that's what we want to find. So one of the characteristics of similar triangles is that their sides are proportional. So what that means is we could say something like 24 is to 36, 24 is to 36 as 34 is to what? 24 is to 36 as 34 is to what side does 34 correspond with? 51. Good. So this should be true. Let's check it out and see if it is. Um, we have a fraction we can reduce 24 over 36. If we divide both those by 12, 24 divided by 12 is 2, 36 divided by 12 is 3. Okay, how about this fraction, 34 over 51? That's a little bit weirder, but 17 actually does go into both those um, numbers. That's a little a one you may not see right away, but... If we divide both those by 17, 34 divided by 17 is 2, and 51 divided by 17 is 3. So we get 2 thirds. Now basically what we're saying is that the small triangle is 2 thirds as big as the big triangle. Or if you flip it over, you, you could say that the big tri triangle is 3 halves or 1 and a half times bigger than the small triangle. As a matter of fact, I could have flipped this original proportion over and I could have said 36 is to 24 as 51 is to what? 34. Good. Those correspond to each other. Then if I reduce this fraction, I'd get 3 over 2 equals 3 over 2. You just have to be consistent. So if you have the big triangle numbers on the top, um, then you have to have the small triangle numbers on the bottom in both of your fractions. So you could use these numbers to find H right now. What, what this 3 over 2 tells us is that the big triangle is 1.5, which is 3 over 2 is 1.5, times bigger than the small triangle. So you could just take 50 times 1.5 to get H. That would work. Um, let's write that out, and then I'll show you the other way. So we could do 50 times 1.5. So how did I learn what the 1.5? I had to take the corresponding sides and divide them. And I didn't really have to do both of them. I could have just done one to figure out, well, how many, let's see, this side that was 24 now turned into 36. So how many times bigger is it? Well, it's not twice as big. I have to divide it. 36 divided by 24, it's one and a half times as big. So therefore, if I my side that was 50 is going to get one and a half times bigger as well. Um, that's a characteristic of similar triangles. So 50 times one and a half would be 75. So there's our answer, 75. Now let me show you another way to do this uh, using an equation and proportions. Let's see, what's the easiest way to get rid of this? Just to erase it. So we're going to use the same idea of a fraction equals a fraction. This is kind of silly. That's okay. All right, so we'll use our corresponding sides. So let's say we have, um, you could use either one. I'm going to use the 24 and the 36. So let's say I go 24 is to 36. Now, I want to find out what H is. So I'm not going to use the 34 and the 51. I'm going to use the 50 and the H. 
The 24 is on top, which is in the small triangle, so I have to put the 50 on top, since it's in the small triangle. And 50 corresponds with what side in the large triangle? That would be H. So now I have a proportion. A proportion is when a fraction equals a fraction. And I have a variable in this proportion. So one of the characteristics of proportions is that you can cross multiply. Let's see if I can do this faster here. There we go. So let me show you that that property. And this is a property if you use proportions you really want to know. Um, if A over B equals C over D then A times D equals B times C. That will always be true. So A times D, these numbers across from each other here, will always equal B times C, these numbers across from here. Though That's just always true if you have two fractions that are equal. Um, I'll show you a quick example. Let's say we have 1 half equals, what does 1 half equal? Well, it equals 5 tenths. All right, look at the diagonals, 1 times 10 and 5 times 2. Those are both equal to 10. How about if I have um, 4, 6, that would equal, if I times the top by 3, I get 12. If I times the bottom by 3, I get 18. So 6 times 12 would be 72, and 4 times 18 would be 72. Always true. It's just a characteristic of... Um, Fractions. When a fraction equals a fraction, those diagonal numbers are equal. Algebraically, it's pretty easy to show this is true. If you have A over B equals C over D, and you multiply both sides of that equation by B, D, which is completely legal because you can multiply both sides of an equation by whatever you want as long as you do it on both sides. On the right hand side, the D's will cancel. And on the left hand side, the B's will cancel. And using the commutative property, I'm going to switch these around. You get A times D equals, you got C times B. I'll switch that around just so it matches this, B times C. So that's just a proof of why this works. I mean, it's one step proof, but it does show algebraically why if you have this proportion then you then the diagonals uh, the product of the diagonals will be equal to each other okay all right so that was a lot of talk about why this works so let's go ahead and, and finish our problem and see how we can use it to solve a problem so I'm gonna go ahead and leave this property up so now we have 24 over 36 equals 50 over H and we have this property where we know that the product of the diagonals is equal to each other so we know 24 times h, whatever that is, has to equal 36 times 50. Well, 36 times 50, let's see, 36 times 100 would be 3,600, so half of that would be 1,800. You could do that out if you want. 36 times 50 would be 1,800 equals 24 times h. How do I write that? I'll just write 24h. Now I have a little algebra problem I can solve in one step. I'm trying to find out what h is, so I'm going to divide both sides by 24. And if you do the calculation, you'll find that 24 goes into 1,875 times. And we get the same answer we got um, when, we were, when we did it by figuring out how many times bigger the rectangle was. Now you might think, well, I like how you did it before where you just figured out how many times bigger each side was and then you multiplied it and that's fine that'll work great for similar triangles and any similar figures but you there's some problems where you use proportions to solve them that don't involve shapes and I mean I guess you could still use that idea of figuring out how many times bigger something is but it's a little bit less instinctual when you don't have a picture a lot of problems that use proportions to solve them don't involve pictures um, they might involve you know concepts or um, miles per hour and things like this so learning how to use a proportion and how to cross multiply is a really valuable tool that you should practice um, on these type of problems. So I hope that helped and just remember this pro this uh, property over here when you have to when you have a proportion you 
can multiply across the diagonals and set those equal to each other. No matter how complicated what's going on in the proportion is, you can always use this property to help you solve.